Welcome to this video on how to use the List View web part in SharePoint 2013. The List View web part does exactly what it says. It displays a list view or a library view on a web page. This video describes how the web part is used so you'll understand its purpose, then gives several examples of configuring the web part. There are companion videos that give an introduction to web parts. We suggest you view them first if you haven't done so yet. Whenever you create a list or library, a page is automatically created to hold it. For example, this is a list of daily reports on its page, which is named allitems.aspx. If you need to display a list or library view on other pages, use the List View web part. For example, here's the daily reports list on the home page of a SharePoint site. Let's open that page for editing by clicking the Settings gear and Edit Page. Then click OK to check the page out. You'll see that the page is a web part page containing several web parts. Now let's open the web part that contains the daily reports list. Hover over the title, click the down arrow, and click Edit Web Part. In the tool pane, you'll see it's a list view web part. So this is an example of how the list view web part displays a list on a page. Since all we've done is looked at the tool pane, I'm going to cancel out. Now let's add a list view web part to display a list entitled Custom List. In the header zone, click Add a Web Part. You will not see a web part called List View in the Web Part Gallery. Instead, you add one of the lists or libraries from the Apps category. The custom list is a partial inventory of ferry routes, names, and classes. Select that list and click Add. A list view web part is automatically created to contain the default All Items view of the list. To verify this, hover over the title, click the down arrow, and click Edit Web Part. In the tool pane, you'll see that the custom list is displayed via a list view web part. We didn't change the web part, so let's click Cancel to close the tool pane. And save the page. In the custom list on the home page, note the order of the ferry routes. The web part title is a link back to the original custom list. So let's click it to take a look at the original list. In the original custom list, you'll see that the order of the ferry routes in the All Items view is the same as the order of the ferry routes in the web part we just added. So this confirms that when we added the custom list to the home page, the default view was used. Note that there are two additional views for the original custom list, sort by ferry name and sort by route. We'll use one of those in our next example. In a list view web part, you can switch the default view to another view. We just saw that our custom list had two additional views, so let's switch to one of those. Let's return to and edit the home page. Click the home page link. This time we'll open the page for editing by clicking the page tab and edit. The page is automatically checked out. Open the List View web part for editing. Hover over the title, click the down arrow, and click Edit Web Part. In the Tool pane, click the Selected View drop down and change the current view to Sort by Ferry Name. Click OK to acknowledge the web page message and OK to close the tool pane. The web part now displays the Sort by Ferry Name view. You can also edit an existing view in the List View web part. This is useful if you want to customize the view for a particular web part on a particular page. Let's make our view simpler by removing the column for ferry classes. Edit the List View web part again. This time, click Edit the Current View and OK to continue. 
In the Settings page, uncheck the Ferry Classes column and click OK. The view is changed and the web part and page are automatically saved. Note that the custom list no longer includes the Ferry Class column. Here's a very important note. If you edit a view within a web part, it does not change that view in the original list or library. Let's verify this. Click the Custom List link in the title of the web part to return to the original list. If we look at the Sort by Ferry Name view, you'll see that it still contains the Ferry Classes column even though we removed it from the web part display. When should you create a view in a list or library, and when should you edit a view within the List View web part? If you think the view might be useful to others, create it in the list or library so it is reusable. If you think the view won't be useful elsewhere, edit the view within the web part. This keeps the list of views from being too long. There are a few additional configuration options you may find useful. Edit the home page again by clicking the Page tab and Edit. Open the List View web part for editing to see the other configuration options. The toolbar is the command set that appears at the top of a list or library. The List View web part offers several options to control how the toolbar is displayed. Click Summary Toolbar and apply it. In this example, it has options to add new items or to open Quick Edit. Let's change to the full toolbar and apply it. In this example, it happens to be the same as the summary toolbar. Apply No Toolbar to remove the options to add new items or open Quick Edit. and change to Show Toolbar for the look and feel of SharePoint 2010. Next, let's expand the Advanced section and look at the title URL. By default, the title of the web part is a link to its original list or library. We've already used that link a couple of times in this video. Change the title URL if you want the link to go elsewhere. Finally, let's look at one AJAX option. If you have a dashboard or other content that needs to be periodically updated, you could rely upon the user to refresh the web page. But, if you enable Asynchronous Automatic Refresh, the web part contacts the SharePoint server and refreshes automatically. How often the web part connects to the server is defined in the Automatic Refreshing Interval text box. The rest of the Advanced and AJAX options, as well as all of the miscellaneous options, are reserved by the Web Services team for their use. In this video, you've learned how to use, add, and configure the List View web part. We encourage you to check out our other SharePoint videos, as well as the reference and training materials on the SharePoint Help site. On Connect NCDOT, there's a link to help on every page. Go to the main help page and click SharePoint Help to see the SharePoint Help information. On Inside NCDOT, there is a link to the help site in the header and footer of every page. Those links also take you to the SharePoint help site. For information on upcoming SharePoint classes, log in to Beacon and check the LMS training calendar, or contact the PC Training Group. Thanks for watching.